Have you ever wondered if a protein can help you lower creatine or help you heal your kidneys? Diet, specifically protein intake, is an important factor in lowering creatinine and healing kidneys. Generally, it is recommended to reduce protein intake to improve kidney health as creatinine is a byproduct of protein metabolism. So, protein intake can significantly affect creatinine levels in the body. However, not all proteins are created equal. Protein has been found to have amazing benefits for kidney health. In this video, we will uncover the shocking truth about protein intake and how it can help you lower creatinine and heal your kidneys fast. We will also answer some common questions about protein and kidney health, such as what type of protein is best for the kidneys and how much protein you should consume. Before introducing you to this protein, firstly let's understand why it is advised to reduce protein intake to improve kidney health. This will help you understand the topic in a better way. Protein is an essential nutrient for our body, and it plays a vital role in building and repairing tissues. However, for people with kidney disease, protein intake must be limited. But why does this happen? Let's discuss the reasons behind this. When we consume protein, our kidneys are responsible for filtering out the waste products of protein metabolism. This includes substances like urea, which is produced when the body breaks down proteins. Normally, this process works fine as long as the kidneys are functioning properly. However, in cases of kidney disease, the kidneys may not be able to filter out these waste products efficiently, leading to an accumulation of toxins in the body. This can cause further damage to the already struggling kidneys. Moreover, animal-based proteins like meat, poultry, dairy, and eggs require more energy for digestion. This puts added stress on the kidneys as they have to work harder to filter out more waste products. This process can lead to glomerular hyperfiltration, where the kidneys are forced to filter blood at a faster rate than usual. Another reason why protein intake is limited for kidney patients is that animal proteins tend to be acidic. Our body needs alkaline substances to neutralize this acid and maintain a healthy pH balance. However, there are limited neutralizing agents in our body and this burden falls on the kidneys. This means that they have to work harder to maintain the body's acid-base balance, putting additional strain on them. Furthermore, animal proteins are high in phosphorus, which can increase the risk of kidney stones. These stones can cause blockages in the urinary tract and lead to complications for people with already weakened kidneys. Finally, let's talk about creatinine. Creatinine is a waste product that is produced by the muscles when they use energy. It is filtered out of the blood by the kidneys and eliminated through urine. High levels of creatinine can indicate reduced kidney function, so it is essential to keep these levels under control for people with kidney disease. By limiting protein intake, the production of creatinine can be reduced, helping to lower its levels in the body. For this reason, protein intake is often limited for kidney patients to help reduce the burden on their kidneys and prevent further damage. Now, let's address the protein myth. The debate over whether protein damages the kidneys has been ongoing, with conflicting opinions often sparking heated discussions. One prominent example involves an influencer, Kimberly, who claims that protein does not harm the kidneys. This assertion has raised questions and prompted responses from various corners, including the scientific community. To clarify, protein intake does not harm the kidneys of healthy individuals. Numerous studies have shown that even high protein consumption does not conclusively lead to kidney damage in people with normal kidney function. The evidence supporting this is mixed, but generally indicates no significant risk for healthy kidneys. However, the situation changes for individuals with chronic kidney disease, CKD. In such cases, the kidney's filtering ability is compromised and excessive protein intake can indeed be detrimental. For those with CKD, Managing protein consumption is crucial to avoid further kidney damage. The right amount of protein you should consume for kidney health. The question that everyone wants to know is, how much protein do you need to improve your kidney function? Let us tell you the right answer. Generally, determining the right amount of protein to consume for kidney health can be a confusing topic with conflicting information out there. However, when it comes to improving kidney function, the key is moderation. The recommended daily allowance, RDA for protein, is 0.8 grams per kilogram of body weight. 
For someone weighing 150 pounds, 68 kilograms, this would equate to around 54 grams of protein per day. However, for those with kidney disease, this may not be the ideal amount. If your goal is to improve kidney function and reduce creatinine levels, then it is recommended to limit protein intake to around 0.55 grams per kilogram of ideal body weight per day. This means that for an individual weighing 150 pounds, 68 kilograms, they should consume only about 37 grams of protein daily. For individuals with chronic kidney disease stages three or higher, the recommended amount may be even lower. It is essential to consult a doctor or registered dietitian to determine the exact amount of protein needed based on your specific condition and medical history. Now let's discuss, can we just get our required amino acids from sources other than meat and dairy products? While protein is vital for our body's functioning, it does not necessarily have to come from animal sources like meat and dairy products. Amino acids are the building blocks of protein and they can be obtained from a variety of plant-based foods. Plant-based sources such as beans, lentils, nuts, seeds, and whole grains contain all nine essential amino acids required by our body. These amino acids can be combined in various ways to form complete proteins. This means that a well-planned vegetarian or vegan diet can provide all the necessary amino acids without the need for animal-based proteins. Moreover, Research has shown that a diet low in protein, but supplemented with specific amino acids, can help delay dialysis and protect the kidneys in individuals with CKD. These special amino acids are not available over the counter and require a prescription. Debunking myths about red meat and kidney health. The carnivore diet has recently become very famous just because of influential people who say it can help with a wide range of health problems. Google Trends shows that searches for carnivore have gone up a lot in the last few months. It looks like this new diet is taking the place of the ketogenic, keto diet, which a lot of people find hard to follow and bad for them in the long run. People who had dropped weight often gained it back, and sometimes even more when they went back to their old eating habits. The meat-only diet, on the other hand, has its problems. A big worry is that too much protein, especially from red meat, can hurt the kidneys. To this, some influential people have said, you can eat as much animal protein as you want and it won't hurt your kidneys. This goes against what most doctors and kidney specialists say, which is that eating a lot of protein can be bad for your kidneys. A lot of comments in movies on YouTube say that people who only eat red meat have cured kidney disease. There is, however, no solid proof to back up these claims. It has not been shown in any study that eating meat can help people with chronic kidney disease, CKD, in any way. If there isn't any good study behind these claims, it's best to be careful and not believe them right away. Protein and kidney disease. Your kidneys function similarly to the muscles in your body. When the muscles in your leg are healthy, you can perform various physical activities without issues. However, if a tendon is strained, even minor movements can exacerbate the injury, requiring rest for recovery. This analogy applies to your kidneys and protein intake. If your kidneys are compromised, they need a break from excessive protein to recover effectively. There is ongoing debate about the impact of meat consumption on kidney health within the general population. Some studies suggest that high meat intake can harm the kidneys, while others do not find significant adverse effects. This mixed evidence indicates that the relationship between protein and kidney health is complex. It's important to critically evaluate the information and understand that some influencers may present a biased view, emphasizing studies that support their agenda while dismissing opposing research as flawed. It is crucial to consider the full spectrum of scientific evidence to make informed decisions about protein consumption and kidney health. One critical issue these influencers always overlook when promoting protein is that many people have CKD without knowing it. It's estimated that 90% of people with CKD are unaware of their condition. We're talking about almost one in seven adults in the US. This is why the carnivore diet could be the fastest route to dialysis. There is one more thing that people need to understand. Please stop buying table salt from YouTube influencers. They are selling you powder in the name of protein. Protein Intake and Diabetes When considering diabetes, managing protein intake becomes more nuanced. 
Despite the presence of diabetes, kidney function remains fundamentally similar to that of a non-diabetic person. The metabolism of protein can still cause harm to the kidneys. However, individuals with diabetes face additional dietary restrictions, particularly regarding carbohydrate intake. For a non-diabetic patient with chronic kidney disease, CKD, minimizing protein intake to near-zero levels and supplementing with special amino acids can help prevent malnutrition. This approach could theoretically apply to diabetic patients as well. Yet, most individuals with diabetes find it more practical to consume enough protein to avoid an over-reliance on carbohydrates. Nevertheless, it is crucial to maintain a low-protein diet. For diabetic patients, it is especially important to source all protein from plant-based foods. This strategy helps manage both protein and carbohydrate intake effectively, offering a balanced approach to nutrition that considers the complexities of diabetes management. The benefits of plant-based protein. Managing diabetes requires not only limiting protein intake, but also replacing animal-based proteins with plant-based alternatives. Recent scientific literature highlights the benefits of this dietary switch. Research indicates that transitioning from animal proteins to plant proteins may reduce renal hyperfiltration and proteinuria, potentially lowering the risk of developing or worsening renal failure over time. Plant-based proteins generate fewer waste products than animal-based proteins, which eases the burden on the kidneys. Reduced renal hyperfiltration means the kidneys work less and therefore have greater longevity. Additionally, protein-rich foods complicate blood glucose management as they can cause fasting glucose levels to rise. Unlike a glucose spike, which is a temporary issue, elevated fasting glucose is a persistent problem, making effective management crucial. Protein-rich foods, red meat in particular, are very bad for people with diabetes as they are linked not just to an increased risk for diabetes, but also to higher fasting glucose. This very large study conducted in the U.S. on 266,195 participants confirmed very recently that if your goal is improving your diabetes status, red meat is something you want to stay away from. If you have diabetes and CKD and you want to improve, only eat plant-based protein and in a limited amount. Yes, this is what the plant-based diet for CKD is all about, and it works as we have seen. Overcoming reluctance to a plant-based diet the hesitation to switch to a plant-based diet is common, especially among men. This reluctance is often due to societal pressures and traditional views of what it means to be masculine. A conversation with a sociologist and mental health counselor helped explain this issue, showing how fragile masculinity plays a big part. Fragile masculinity means some men feel insecure about their manliness, so they adopt exaggerated behaviors like eating lots of meat to seem more masculine. They constantly worry about appearing less manly, which drives them to reaffirm their masculinity. For many, being the steak-eating guy in social settings is a way to show off this traditional image, like a modern-day caveman. However, this behavior can lead to serious health problems. Trying to be a real man by eating a lot of meat can result in severe conditions, such as kidney failure. It raises the question, is it worth risking your health just to seem more manly? On the other hand, men who switch to a plant-based diet often show a stronger sense of confidence. They don't feel the need to follow traditional stereotypes to prove their manliness. But one common mistake is not getting enough protein. Ensuring a balanced diet with enough plant-based proteins is crucial. These men not only protect their kidneys, but also show a confident and secure sense of masculinity. The most dangerous mistake with protein intake. Many individuals, particularly those diagnosed with chronic kidney disease, CKD, often grapple with misconceptions regarding their protein intake. It's a concern that many doctors frequently encounter among patients across different stages of the disease. Many assume they are not consuming enough protein, often comparing their current intake to what they used to eat before their CKD diagnosis. There's a prevalent fear that reducing protein intake could impair bodily functions. However, Severe malnutrition due to inadequate protein intake is uncommon and typically affects only the elderly or severely ill individuals who struggle to eat at all. If there is genuine starvation, immediate consumption of any available food is necessary, alongside consulting a healthcare professional promptly. 
Yet, for most CKD patients, the real danger lies in excessive protein consumption. A lot of research and evidence has been gathered on this topic. Although dietitians are closely watching their patients, many still go over the suggested protein limits. Such a high amount, called dietary protein amount, DPI, can seriously damage kidney function. Mistakes like this can have terrible results, even causing permanent damage to the kidneys. Remember to moderate protein intake and eat upper staple foods to control CKD and reduce the risks of consuming too much protein. These dietary changes can help manage kidney disease and improve overall kidney function. Moderation and balance are key, so aim to consume protein in moderate doses according to your body's needs. Thank you.